I was first aware of Undermilk Wood um, probably when I was a student at the Royal College of Art and it came out, I was there from 53 to 56, so whenever it came out, um, the, the Welsh students who, who were at the college all picked up on it instantly and were doing paintings about it. So I was very conscious of, of it at that point. And then thinking about actually illustrating it was much later when um, Michael Mitchell, he was a, a frustrated printer being a dentist and then he gave up dentistry, took up printing and we talked about making a book and it came up as a possibility at that point and, and that was, I'm mean, working back, that was 28 years ago. It's broken into three different categories. Um, this category is dreams and there are 26 of those. This category is, port is a portrait of everybody mentioned in the book and there are 60 sheets of those. And then this is everything else, and I call it the topographical category, but it's, it's, it's um, everything that isn't a portrait or a dream. And, and the dreams are in watercolour. The portraits are all a pencil drawing done in quite a hard lead pencil between kind of 3H and 7H with highlights of white like that. And these are, are various... Um, some are collages, some are photographs, you know, various ways of working. Um, Mike and I discussed the fact that I, we should go to Larne and I should take some reference photography. We, we walked around the town, I obviously photographed the, the, the clock tower, um, we decided which houses were which. So I never intended to use the photographs as photographs, they were purely for reference. And then I realised I'd got some really nice photographs. So what, what I then did, had, I had them printed in sepia, which kind of fitted into the mood of things. And, and about six of them, I think, are just pure photographs. What then happened was because we were wandering around the town together, and I'd certainly never intended to use the photographs, Mike appears in a lot of them. So, again, I can't quote it, but one of the characters steams naked past the, the, the sailor's arms. So I'd got the sailor's arms and I'd cut out a little nude figure and then I realised that Mike was actually standing in the picture. So my solution for that was that, that I'd already got, a, um, I'd got Richard Burton as the first voice. So I took him out and Mike becomes the first voice. So there's, so there's one of the photographs is I took was Mike wearing a cap. So I did that as the drawing. So as first voice, and your one isn't quite sure what, what the voices are, you, I mean, how they're used, but they are specific people. So he can appear as a kind of ghost or wraith or presence. So, so in a few of them, your mic is there, but as first voice. Well, the process over the years has been pretty much that I've treated it as a separate piece of work. You know, I, I would be here in my studio, uh, mainly painting, and then I would work on Under Milkwood at home in the evening. So certainly the cutting out, was virtually 100% done at home. And then later on, I would bring some of the work here to work on. But I, I treated it, it, it it's almost um, a separate me doing it. You know, there's a, there's a, a person called Peter Blake who's a painter, and there's a person called Peter Blake who's an illustrator who's illustrating under Milkwood.